Prisonhood for me was a uh, was a, a life changing experience because it was the, the movie that when I was talking about going to film school to my friends in the neighborhood, it was the, the kind of film that we always said that we wanted to see that we never saw at the movies. It was really, really powerful on the page. I mean, I remember reading that script and and, and crying when I finished it. It was the first movie that I read that I thought, oh my goodness, this is, this is why I'm here. This is the reason why I'm here. I thought only like people in the neighborhood would even care about Boys in the Hood. I knew everybody on my street would love it. Hollywood, not so sure. There are projects that go far beyond the time that they spend in the theater or in DVD, which is what Boys in the Hood is. It's a tutorial. It is a piece of material that creates better understanding of the black community in South Central Los Angeles. The idea of the film actually came in, in mind in the, in the early 80s, just sitting on the porch with my friends on 101st in Vermont, just talking about the types of movies that we wanted to see that we never saw, you know, and nobody was making movies about what we were going through in Los Angeles. I remember the day that my agent called and said, there's a film called Boys in the Hood. And I was like, that is the corniest title I have ever heard in my life. And what white guy thinks he can write a movie called Boys in the Hood? I was very, you know, I had a little chip on my shoulder. First four days of rehearsals, I had to do two more screen tests because the studio just wasn't sure, <laughs> you know. It's so funny, looking back on it now, it's like, wow, that must have been unnerving. But at the time, you know, it was my first major thing. So I thought this was all par for the course. I wasn't sure if I was qualified to be in a movie, to act, you know, actors go to school. Actors are the people I pay <laughs> to go see movies, you know what I mean? It ain't me. I had not yet had my 30th birthday, and I was playing um, sort of a 35-year-old, and <laughs> I, I was just really sort of grateful to just have the job, you know? I had done a show for five years, and it was a fairly successful show. After the show was canceled for maybe a year and a half, I didn't work, couldn't get an audition or anything. So for me, it was like the beginning of my career. You know, I hadn't really done anything, and you know, I know Cuba was, had done a couple of TV shows, but I didn't know who he was. And you know, I knew Fishburne from you know Pee Wee Herman's show, and uh, I knew Ice Cube's music, but. You know, then our director is a, is, a, is a guy that was about my age. So it was like, it was just one of those things where I, I, I'm glad that I didn't realize it was going to be as big as it was, because I probably would have been a lot more nervous. I felt uh, privileged uh, and also a little bit of uh, do I belong? And once I said, OK, I do belong, OK, let's knock it out the park now. It was an exciting period because I had to just kind of man up and then actually become a director. It was almost like, you know, here you are, you know, go into the swimming pool and into the ocean and then swim. And that's what I look at in that, as that experience because, um, it, it, you know, it, it, it was all of my dreams coming true. The crew of people that surrounded him, uh, many of whom were African-American people who had been in the industry for a long time, we all sort of formed a protective net around him, if you will, because we were, I think all of us determined that he would be successful in this endeavor. I knew that when we were shooting, we were making something important. It felt that way, it felt that way. You know, I went to school in Inglewood, I knew South Central, it was not news to me, but I knew it was news to a lot of other people. And I think the authenticity that John brought to it it was the authenticity and it was the heart. I mean, you could not watch the movie without having an emotional response, and that's the whole reason why we make movies. 
Boys in the Hood didn't have its debut in the United States. It had its debut at the Cannes Film Festival in France, which was, you know, my first trip out of the country. And it, so the movie opened a kind of international acclaim before it even hit the States. When we got off the plane at Cannes, and we were surrounded by photographers and reporters. I thought, wow, this is, this is bigger than I thought it was. You know, talking about somebody who was like, man, these people about to shit on our movie. They about to shit on it, because I know they don't care what's going on in South Central Los Angeles. You know, that was my thought, that the world just didn't care. And that's why, you know, this was the first movie of its kind to come out. It had to be from somebody from the neighborhood to speak on the neighborhood, and people in, in France just don't care. Damn, was I wrong. When the movie was done and everybody stood up and they did not stop clapping for 20 minutes, I mean, it was, it was overwhelming because it was an international response, and that response was exactly as it we had shown the movie in our backyard in, in South Central, and they got it like that. And that's how the American press got onto the film, because, you know, they were like, oh, well, the French know something that we don't, you know, let's see what's going on with this, this little movie. We started on that high note. We started at Cannes in the middle of, you know, the Palais, screening this movie. It was a very small movie about a very specific group, and the world responded. It was an eye-opening experience. It let me know that what I should be doing should be global and not just for the hood, but for the world. I remember the first time I went to a private screening in Chicago. It wasn't even a private screening, it was a test screening. And every emotional moment my character had and every scene of heavy weight, the audience burst out laughing. And I was like, horrified, because <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, they think I'm a buffoon. What was I thinking? We're screwed, we're done. The movie was so true to life that in certain areas where this movie was a reality, they couldn't connect with the emotion on screen because it was their reality. So to them, you know, a, a defensive mechanism almost was to you know, laugh and, you know, express themselves. And, and that's when I knew that the movie was more than just entertainment. When the movie came out, I walked out of the Baldwin Hills Theater. This guy comes out the theater with his girlfriend, and he's like, you know, hardcore gangster type dude, right? And he's with this girl, and she's just really talkative. She's just like, mouthy, 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 right? And she's on his arm, right? And, um, and they come up to me, you directed that movie? I say, yeah, yeah, I made the movie. I'm here. Oh, she, she come to see how people act here. Says, she says, man, we love the movie. She's just like, we love the movie. We think it's the best movie ever made and everything like this. The dude was looking at me, and he didn't say nothing. He didn't say nothing to me. But she looked up at him, and she said, he loved it, too. He loved it, too. He, can, he's, he can't even say nothing right now because, you know, how he feels. You know what I mean? He's just like, and the dude just looked. He was looking off. He looked at me, and he just looked at me, and he just like, he just shook his head. He just shook his head. Like I told that dude's story, but he he didn't even have any words to describe how he felt at the moment. That was really humbling because here I am speaking to people that I grew up with that nobody really cares about. You know, they're just like fodder and nothing to, to most people in society. And here's a dude who's expressing in a nonverbal way that. He really appreciated what we had done as, as filmmakers, you know, and telling a story that had never been told before. The surprise that I had was how the uh, industry embraced John. And I thought that was surprising and exciting at the same time, because he was so young, and that they would embrace him the way that they did. I thought that was pretty great and groundbreaking. I was the youngest person ever and, and the first African-American to be nominated for Best Director, and I beat Orson Welles out by a year. You know, from, from as me as a cinephile, I start pontificating and playing, you know, playing the mice in my brain, like, oh, God, you know, they're saying, like, you know, I'm going to be like Welles, you know. And Welles was an iconoclast, and he didn't take any shit, and he just did what he wanted to do, and 
I had that kind of demeanor at, as well. That was very shocking. That was shocking because the Academy um, still, I'm, I've just been invited into the Academy this past year. Um, and uh, and it's, a, it's a hard room to play. I just took it with a grain of salt. And I think that that was my saving grace because, you know, I didn't want to live just boys over and over again, you know. I wanted to actually, the irony is I wanted to be where I am right now, where I, I have had a body of work as a filmmaker and explored different genres of filmmaking. And um, and I was when I was young, I wanted to be an older man with experience, and now, you know, I'm an older man. I was like, I'm looking back on that, that experience and like, you know, I could have enjoyed it a little bit more, you know, but it's fine. You know, eventually with the Academy Award nominations and all of that stuff, I realized that we had really tapped into the social consciousness. And it was a statement film. Boys in the Hood is the original. Nobody was doing movies like this about Los Angeles, how we grew up. Colors is one thing. This ain't it. You know what I mean? This is a movie that's not telling you how bad it is to be a fucking cop. This is telling you how bad it is to be in the hood. You know what I'm saying? And and to be innocent and try to survive. The movie for me was a kind of like a, a rap album on film. Just like the rappers were speaking out on in music, that's what I wanted to do. And my attitude was, you know, if only black people go see this movie, then it's gonna be a huge hit and it's fine. But if anybody is cool enough and understands what we're trying to do here, then fine too. Even if you didn't know these people, you felt for them. And, uh, and I think you, your heart reached out to say, these are our kids. These are our kids in America. I don't think I really stopped to ever even think about it. It's now that I realize. Because it's not like this was a story that I had no personal connection to. So for me, it was just, you know, playing my life in front of the world. Put it like this. I didn't realize that the world had no idea what goes on in South Central LA. The movie really captured the zeitgeist of what was going on in that time period in America with youth from all walks of life. And um, it's kind of a time capsule for that. It's like poetry. The more specific you are, the more universal it can become. And if you deal in generalities, people really can't put themselves in it. I lived in the hood. I got bused to school. You know, a bunch of us got bused out. Where we seeing that, you know, in these neighborhoods, our influence is not there. You see what I mean? Our influence is not in these neighborhoods that we was getting bused to. So we felt already that these are two different cultures that you know, this side of the tracks don't want to hear about what's going on with that side of the tracks. But I had learned through the music that those barriers that I thought were there were breaking down. When they saw it on film and they saw the authenticity of the, the characters and the story, I was like, wow, now I really understand what these rappers are talking about, what urban culture is about. I did get a phone call from a woman in Milwaukee or somewhere in the middle of the country who was a white, middle-aged housewife who had seen the movie. And I don't know how she tracked me down, but she tracked me down. And she told me that she, she had no idea about South Central or what was going on. And it moved her so much that she just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for opening my eyes. It was somewhat their view into the inner city, their view into South Central without having to go to South Central and um, not realizing what was going on there. So um, I can understand that. And I, and I felt that that was a definite fascination, you know, for a lot of people at that time. But I think what transcended just that initial intrigue was the fact that it was just a hell of a story. A lot of people, no matter what your color, could identify with living in a situation where you didn't have, an, you know, an education to get you out of, you know, your circumstance. You didn't have um, public facilities 
to help you after school. You didn't have people who appeared to care about your well-being that were supposed to be governing the community. Boys in the Hood represented that spirit of, you know, people saying, I know we live like what you perceive to be as animals, and I know you think we're just violent, barbaric people, but we're just like you. We still have clean clothes. We still date. We still have children, you know? We still fear for our kids to watch violence on TV. But every once in a while, you hear a helicopter fly by. Every once in a while, you hear gunshots, you know? Young people, kids in broken neighborhoods, that's a worldwide thing. The idea that you have these three young men who are, you know, living in an environment where every day their lives are potentially at risk, um, where they are faced with the huge decisions about, you know, one path versus another path, and one path leads to destruction, and the other path leads to a positive life, you know, a valuable life. That's human. I think we were allowing people to know that don't be ashamed of where you're from or what you've been through, because white, black, purple, yellow, green, we all go through it. There's a bit of hood in everybody. <laughs> when Boys in the Hood came out, there was a movement afoot that was about African-American cinema and creating a black aesthetic in film. And it was started mainly in my generation by Spike Lee um, in terms of making films that were, you know, made by a black filmmaker, had a predominantly black cast, and had a very unique theme that was kind of Afrocentric. John came at the perfect time with a different perspective of something that we all want to know about. Everybody want to know what goes on in the neighborhood that makes one kid do the right thing, one kid do the wrong thing. He actually gave African-American people a voice and a presence in film. It just opened the doors for, you know, so many films after Boys in the Hood. It changed Hollywood. It changed Hollywood because there were filmmakers and films that would never, I totally believe this, would never have been made if Boys in the Hood hadn't been made well and hadn't been received well. Here you have kind of like a Cinderella story for about six actors and a director. The majority of that cast now, we know them, you know, on a full name basis. John was extra courageous and not really going after the biggest names he could find, but going after people he envisioned in the role. I was, you know, a girl from the hood who Loved it, took some acting classes, got lucky, and, you know, had a, a, and was blessed with a talent. I wasn't, I didn't go to Yale. My mother couldn't afford Yale. That just wasn't realistic for me. What that film did do for, you know, people of color, black actors and actresses, um, it made Hollywood take notice that there's some real talent out there that, you know, is just untapped. I had meetings with, you know, just so many major players in Hollywood, and all of them, started the conversations with I'd never seen anything that had affected me so much as that movie. And it wasn't specific with my, with my performance, it was the movie as a whole. There's nothing more satisfying than giving people an opportunity, having them step up to the plate and deliver, and then having other people chasing it. John Singleton was totally conscious of that. He was like, yo, you know, we're gonna put together you know, our young Hollywood, our young black Hollywood. He's the perfect Pied Piper, you know what I'm saying, for all of us to be as successful as we are in the movie industry. The movie could be about three guys from Warsaw. It could be about three guys from Egypt. It could be about three guys from some small village in, you know, Bolivia. I mean, it has a universal story and universal themes. It's ma mainly a coming of age movie. You know, it's a coming of consciousness movie. It's a, it's a teenage story in a way. It's about choosing your life. And that's some powerful stuff, choosing your life. Which path are you going to take? 
even if that is not your particular story, when you see another kid going through it and you even have a, even a little bit of similarity in your life, it just kind of pulls on your heartstrings. What really gets to me more is when teachers, professors, people who are here to teach people about culture and teach people about uh, each other, use the film as a movie of study. It's taught in colleges around the world. I teach it at USC. And my students, I always ask them, like, have you seen, you know, who's seen Boys in the Hood? And eh, maybe a third of the class, maybe, maybe less. And then I give them a script and I have them watch the movie. And, you know, you can see it in their faces. They're, they're excited. To me, that's, that's about as a good of a compliment you can get from a movie that it taught me something I didn't know. I think it inspires people to talk about what's important to them, you know, their, their own hood, their own relationships and, and, uh, and their own choices. I was really honored when it was put in the registry because uh, I was like, wow, that means that it's going to be one of those things that goes even far beyond my life. We flew to Washington to present it to the Congressional Black Caucus. That was very special. Um, to, have, to, have, to have lawmakers watching the movie, that, that's, that's the stuff of dreams. I mean, that means you're doing something really, really well. The notion that, you know, the film is being recognized as, as a piece that has cultural significance in our time is fitting and, and I think right. I think it would be an injustice to ignore a movie that had changed the way people had viewed a society when it was first premiered and now is still so relevant. It's actually even better than having won an Academy Award probably in the long run. My name is Nia, it means purpose. My father named me, and I think one of the things we all try to do in this life is figure out what our purpose is. Very early on in my career, that was sort of my thing. Find your purpose, stick to it, make sure you set high standards for yourself, and make it matter. Make everything that you do matter. And so being a part of something that I know is going to be around for a long, long time means I guess I found my purpose. Sometime maybe a year or so after Boys in the Hood had come out, a young man approached me. He must have been about 16 years old, and he was very, very overwhelmed to be sort of in my presence, if you will. And he had this look of bewilderment on his face. There was something that he needed from me or that he wanted to express that he really couldn't articulate very well. I was overwhelmed by this outpouring of emotion that this kid had, that he, but he couldn't really articulate what it was he was feeling. Basically, with this role, you've become the father to a generation.